Sometimes it's easy to tell when events are independent and dependent. For example, every time that I flip a coin is independent of all of my previous flips. Flipping a coin now doesn't affect the results of flipping a coin again later on. But sometimes it's more complicated than that. And in that case, we can use conditional probability to see whether two events are truly independent. When events are independent, the occurrence of one event has no effect on the other. With dependent events, the occurrence of one event does affect the occurrence of the other. So for independent events, the probability of x given y is just equal to the probability of x. That's because y does not infect x. That's not the case, however, with independent events. With independent events, we have our conditional probability formula. Um, the probability of x given y is equal to the probability of x and y divided by the probability of y. So here we end up dividing by the probability of y. y really is affecting x in this case. Another thing that's true about independent events is that the probability of x multiplied by the probability of y is equal to the probability of x and y. That is not true for dependent events. In this case, the probability of x and y is equal to the probability of x multiplied by the probability of y given x. Of course, you could also say that's equal to the probability of y multiplied by the probability of x given y. Either way is true. So that's a whole bunch of formulas. Let's talk about what this means. So here's our first example. It says that you draw a card randomly from a deck, you replace it, and then you draw another card. What's the probability of getting a red card both times? Well, half of the deck is red. I'm going to use the letter R to represent red. So let's say that that was my first draw. I'm going to put a little one there for my first draw. The probability of getting a red card the first time I draw a card is one out of two. Then I put that card back in the deck. So what would the probability of getting a red card be on my second draw, given that I got a red card on my first draw? Well, now remember, I put that card back in the deck. So half the cards are red and half of them are black. So my probability of getting a red on my second draw is still just one out of two since half the cards are red. So since these two probabilities are equal, I can infer that they are independent events. My first draw is independent of my second draw. So then if I want to know the probability of getting red on my first draw and my second draw, I can just multiply these probabilities together. 1 half times 1 half is equal to 1 times 1 over 2 times 2. And that's 1 fourth. Why don't you try this next one right here? Pause the video and then hit play when you're ready to see the answer. So the probability of getting any color is equal. They're all equal to 1 fourth since the sections have equal sizes. Um, so what's the probability of getting a blue given that my last spin was red? Well, it's still just 1 fourth because the size of that section did not change. What would the probability of getting a green be if I first got a red on my first try, then a blue on my second try? What are the odds that I get a green on my third try? Well, still just one fourth, because once again, the size of that section did not change. So no matter what, my probabilities are not changing here. These are independent events. So now that I know that they're independent, I can just multiply the probability of getting red times the probability of getting blue times the probability of getting green. That's just 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth, or 1 64th. Now let's talk about gumballs. There are five gumballs left in a machine. Three are blue, one is yellow, and one is red. You want two gumballs. What's the probability that you will get two blue gumballs? Now remember, they come out one at a time. Okay, well let's talk about the probability of getting a blue gumball on your first um, your first attempt to get a gumball. Well, that's just going to be three blues out of five total. So three out of five chance of getting a blue gumball on that first one. Okay, so what about your second gumball? How likely are you to get a blue gumball on your second um, gumball if you already got a blue one on the first? Well, let's see. I'm going to scratch out this one because we already took that out of the machine. So now I have four gumballs total and two of them are blue. So the probability that my second gumball is blue, given that my first gumball was blue, is one half. So these are dependent events. My first gumball affects the likelihood of getting a blue gumball on my second draw. 
So I can calculate the probability of getting a blue on draw one and a blue on draw two by multiplying these two probabilities together. I just need to multiply three out of five times one over two, and that's three out of 10. So I have a three in 10 chance out of getting one gumball that's blue followed by another that's blue. Why don't you pause the video and try the next one on your own? Okay, you ready for the answer? For her first choice, Miss Smith has a seven out of 10 chance of choosing a girl. For her second choice, there's a six out of nine chance of getting a girl again, because one girl has been removed from the draw names in the bowl. And multiplying seven times 10 over six times nine, we get seven over 15. So that's the probability that she'll choose two girls. So remember I said, sometimes it's really easy to tell whether something's independent or dependent. Here's three really ex easy examples. Just circle independent or dependent really quick and see if you get it right. Flipping a coin is always going to be independent. One flip of a coin doesn't affect any of the others. When you draw two tiles out of a bag, if you don't replace them and take them out one at a time, removing the first tile affects the possible outcomes for the second tile that's removed. That's assuming there's no replacement. So in this case, since there wasn't any replacement, it's dependent. Um, rolling a number cube, once again, independent. Each roll doesn't affect the other rolls. What about spinning a spinner? Does one spin affect another? Nope, because just like we said before, the size of the sections on the spinner stay the same. So these are independent events. And since they're independent events, we can just multiply each probability together to get the compound probability. I've circled my even numbers, two, four, six, eight. There's four of them. So the probability of getting an even number is four out of eight. All of the other numbers are odd, so the probability of getting an odd is also 4 out of 8. And of course, both of these fractions simplify to 1 over 2. So for our first question here, the probability of getting an even on spin number 1 is just 1 out of 2. What about getting an odd given that we got an even on spin 1? So here's the long way to do it using the conditional probability formula. The shortcut way to do it is just to realize that this is just 1 half. It doesn't matter what we got on spin one. Spin two, there's still only four numbers that are odd out of eight. So it's still one over two. The first spin doesn't affect that. So what about the probability of getting an even and then an odd? Well, we know that both of these are one half and we know that these are independent events. So we can just multiply them together and say that the probability of getting an even and then an odd is one out of four. What if we had a frequency table? This isn't just like spinning a spinner or flipping coins. Here we can't readily tell whether these are independent or dependent events. In fact, the question asks us to figure out whether um, the event that an apartment has one person is dependent or independent of the event that an apartment has one bedroom. So are those two things related? So first we'll wanna find the probability that an apartment has one person given that it is a one bedroom apartment. Well, there are 55 people who have one person in about an apartment and it's a one bedroom apartment. And that's out of 70 one bedroom apartments. So now what would the probability of having a one person apartment be? Well, there are 60 one person apartments and that's out of a total of 110 apartments. So are these two ratios equal? No, no, they are not. So since they are not equal, these are not independent events. So we can say these are dependent. If they were independent, those probabilities would be equal. Why don't you try this next example? So in this case, the probability of being male, given that you like to dance, is the same as the probability of being male. So we would say that these two events are independent. So let's think this through. In this next example, you and a friend are playing Scrabble and there's five letters in the bag. You draw two tiles, one at a time. So you take out a tile, and then you take out another tile and you don't return either tile. What's the probability of getting a consonant followed by a vowel? We wanna know, are these independent or dependent? So there's some questions to guide our thinking here. First, let's think about getting a consonant on draw one. Well, here's my consonants. There's three of them. So the probability of getting a consonant on that first draw is three consonants out of five total letters. Now, what about getting a vowel on draw two, given that I got a consonant on draw one? Well, I'm just gonna scratch out one of these consonants. I'll, I'll choose Z, it doesn't really matter. Um, so now how likely am I to get a vowel? Well, there's still two vowels, but now there's only four total letters. 
So that would be my probability of getting a vowel on my second draw, given that I got a consonant on my first draw. Finally, what would the probability be of getting a consonant on draw one and a vowel on draw two? Well, my events are dependent because drawing a consonant on the first draw affected my probability of getting a vowel on my second draw. If I hadn't taken out the consonant, then this would have been two out of five, right? Because there would have still been five letters in there, but it's not. So we're gonna use what we learned earlier to find the probability of these two things happening. Remember we said that the probability of X given Y is equal to the probability of X and Y divided by the probability of Y. If we multiply both sides by the probability of Y, we can see that the probability of X and Y is just equal to the probability of X given Y multiplied by the probability of Y. So in this case, what we need to do, whew, that was a mouthful, is multiply 3 fifths times 2 fourths. And that'll give us the probability of getting a consonant and a vowel on draw 1 and draw 2. And so that probability, 3 fifths times 2 fourths, gives us 3 tenths. So the odds are 3 out of 10.